feast your eyes on the hourglass the four-way intersection that is the crown jewel of my new 2.0 rail system design the entire system is right hand drive although easily converted to left hand drive if that's what you prefer uses four gap spacing everything is chunk aligned and has proper proper chunk spaced power poles throughout the entire system this intersection itself is roughly 94 95 trains per minute depending on test variants although if you choose to signal span the intersection you can get close to 100 it buffers a six length train in every direction unless it's going straight in which case it can buffer up to two six length trains in those directions the entire intersection fits neatly into a three by three chunk grid and as of this video this is the only intersection i believe that meets the criteria of fitting into three by three having buffering and having proper power pole spacing in it as well i have looked extensively and i simply couldn't find one that met that met all those criteria so that's our four-way let's take a look at the three-way which we're calling the tulip it's based on the same principles of the four-way, namely the fact that by moving the straight to the outside, you gain a lot more flexibility with the interior curves. This one, wrong button, clocks at roughly 78 or so, give or take, trains per minute, and also has room to buffer a six-length train in every direction. And if it's going on the bottom straight, it can buffer two. The top straight only buffers one. It's also a very high thoroughfoot intersection. I am very happy with both of these intersections. I have spent a lot of time on them and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears have been poured into them. And I'm very happy with the results and how they look as well. They look great. So, on to the rest of the system. So here we've got the book with the main rail segments. It's a relatively minimalist book. I have avoided bloat and avoided clutter and only included what I think are the essentials. It has only what you need, nothing more, nothing less. The entire book is only about uh, a dozen or so rail, rail segments for the, main, for the main segments. We have our straights, our curves, and everything snaps together nicely, in one chunk, one chunk uh, per segment each. We have our, uh, a, a turnaround here which can be stacked on itself to make a quick early game low thoroughput intersection. It's worth noting that by doing this, these intersections only have a thoroughput of roughly 30 trains per minute. These are not meant to be used late game. These are meant to just be used early game or to set up quick intersections in areas where you know you're not going to have a lot of train thoroughput. You can stack it on it as many, you know, in any, as many directions as you want, having it just be a right or just going straight or you can turn it into a quick, easy four-way. Late game, it is if you want high throughput, it is easy to just remove the center part and replace it with the larger intersection if you actually need the full throughput that the system is capable of offering you. Let's take a look at the rest of the pieces. We've got our elevated segment here, straights for those as well, and curves. Again, we've got the same roundabout if you need to turn your trains around or you want to make your quick early game intersections. And these all snap together nice and seamlessly with the intersections as well. A few other notes about the system. I have chosen to avoid putting power poles in the elevated parts, mainly because of one reason, and that reason is Fulgora. My reasoning here is that anytime you're building exclusively elevated rails, you're likely building it on Fulgora, and you cannot place the power poles down without using foundation in that case. So I have left those out of that system for now. I might change my mind on that later, but uh, they're relatively easy to add in if you want. The, the spacing is there for them. But the idea is that if you are like elevating and building long segments of purely elevated rail, you're probably doing it in an area where you can't easily build the power poles anyway. And again, on a planet like Fulgora, it's easier to just do distributed power on that planet regardless. 
I am not including any flat intersections in this system. There are only two, only essentially two, well, three if you want to count the three on the four-way. But uh, there, there's essentially only two ways to make an intersection in this system. One is by using the early game stackable roundabout, and the second is by using the end game ones. I'm not including any middle, you know, cross-based intersections because, frankly, the thoroughput compared to the roundabout is not that much higher. Like, if you do the standard, you know, X-based intersection, it's roughly around, like, 45 or so TPM versus the 30-ish you get here. Whereas these are capable of, like, you know, 80, 90. Essentially, you want to use these if you're trying to just save rail or you don't have elevated or you don't have, uh, well, if you don't have elevated rails yet, you're using the flat one. But you're, you're using these in the early game or in areas where you know that there's not going to be a lot of trains there and you don't need to use the larger ones. Anywhere where you think that there might be a significant amount of train traffic, you are meant to use the larger intersections. In the second book over here, we've got a bunch of different stations. I've got an inline station down here. This one can only do a five length train max. So the rest of the system, you know, can essentially handle unlimited le train lengths due to the way that uh, elevated rails and rail signal only elevation elevations work. But as far as the stations go, most of them are set to about six train length maximum. So either one four ones or two fours or one fives, with the exception of this one, which due to it being limited in two chunks, is only capable of handling one one four trains at the most. We've got a few others, such as a bulb station, an inline depot, a perpendicular station block, and all of these. All snap to the chunk grid and are easily connected to the rest of your system. There's going to be a lot more added to this rail book. I've spent the past week pouring a lot of time into this and refining it and iterating through like dozens and dozens of dozens of different variations of these intersections and segments before I finally settled on these. I'm still working on the station part the most. That's the one part where you'll probably see the most improvement. But at this point, I'm going ahead and putting the blueprint book out, mainly because I think the intersections are worth looking at, and the main parts of the rail are more or less complete at this point. Still trying to think of a name for this. I'm leaning towards the one rail, but if you've got a better suggestion, I'd love to hear it in the comments, because I haven't quite settled on one yet. But I hope this helps you out. You can find the blueprint on my sheets, which will be in the description, and keep an eye out for updates for it. Thanks for watching. I'm Stupid Fat Hobbit, and I stream at Twitch TV SF Hobbit.